ABC2 News, the latest at 11. Tragedy in southwest Baltimore as fire claims the life of a mother of three. Good evening, I'm Jenny Glick. The fire also spread to an adjacent home where a woman was sleeping. ABC2 News' Cheryl Connor joins us live in southwest Baltimore after talking to the woman and investigators. Cheryl. Well, thanks, Cheryl. State regulators have fined Domino's Sugar Company for an explosion last November at the South Baltimore plant. The company was fined $4,000 for allowing sugar dust to accumulate in the plant, which led to last November's explosion. The explosion blew out dozens of windows and injured three workers. A report from the Maryland Occupational Safety and Health Administration says the plant was not seriously damaged, but the explosion did damage walls, ceilings, and floors. Well, thousands attended the funeral today of Baltimore DJ Kay Swift. She was more than a radio personality on 92Q. She's credited with breaking ground in the club music scene. And it was clear at her funeral how many people she touched. And Kay Swift died in a pool accident at a party on Monday. The medical examiner has reported she died of accidental neck injury. Well, now the very latest from India, where 29 people were killed and at least 88 others injured after a series of explosions in the city of Ahmedabad. Earlier reports had the number injured at 100. As many as 17 blasts may have gone off several neighborhoods Saturday night. Several Indian cities have been hit by serial blasts in recent months blamed on Islamic militants. A terrorist group based in western China has apparently threatened to attack the upcoming Summer Olympics. ABC, to ABC News that is reports the Turkestan Islamic Party warns spectators and athletes, particularly Muslims, not to attend the Beijing Games in a new propaganda, propaganda video released yesterday. The group leader apparently warns the group will attack Chinese cities with tactics never used before. The warning comes just two weeks before the start of the Beijing Olympics. Cuban President Raul Castro addressed thousands in Santiago at the military barracks where he and his brother Fidel launched the country's revolution 55 years ago. It was at the same anniversary celebration two years ago that Fidel Castro was last seen in public. Raul succeeded Fidel in February since taking office. Raul Castro has been credited with making reforms aimed at making life for Cubans more comfortable, but critics say he still hasn't done enough. Well, Senator Barack Obama is back from his whirlwind trip through the Middle East and Europe. Coming up, how he finished up the trip and how Senator John McCain hopes to use the trip to his advantage. The U.S. Senate has passed a bill to help hundreds of thousands dealing with foreclosures, but we'll tell you why it might be too late for a family who was given an extreme home makeover. And the minor league baseball player who threw a ball that hit a fan is out of prison, who he told police he was trying to hit. But first, we're going to take a look at the conditions at Howard Community College at 75 degrees. Well, after months of debate today, the U.S. Senate has overwhelmingly passed the most sweeping housing legislation in decades. The $300 billion bill will help an estimated 400,000 homeowners fight off foreclosure by refinancing into more affordable loans. There is also emergency funding to prevent collapse of lending giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which own or guarantee nearly half of all home mortgages. The legislation now heads to the White House, where President Bush says he will sign the bill into law law. And an Atlanta family, which was chosen by the ABC show Extreme Makeover Home Edition to be given a new home, may be losing the home. The home is now in foreclosure. The family has apparently defaulted on one of the two loans they've taken out on the home since it was built two years ago. According to court documents, the home will be auctioned off in just, just 10 it's days. Not it's not true. Now to our ongoing Democracy 2008 coverage. Senator Barack Obama is back home after his overseas trip to the war zone in Iraq. Meanwhile, Senator John McCain, who's been using Obama's trip for campaign fodder, spoke by satellite to the Americans with Disabilities Conference. But ABC2 News Rachel Martin begins her report with Obama in London. News from around the nation starts in Rhode Island, where police found the bodies of a missing couple in a septic tank in their yard. 60-year-old James Suarez Sr. and 53-year-old Marianne Suarez were reported missing by family members on July 15th after they missed a family reunion. Police went to the couple's home today and excavated the yard with a backhoe. Police then removed two body bags with their remains. Reports are a family member has been arrested, but no one has been charged. A Wisconsin man is facing felony charges after shooting a lawnmower 
that wouldn't start. 56-year-old Keith Wellandowski says he got angry when the mower wouldn't work, so he shot it with a shotgun. He told police that since it's his mower in his yard, he should be able to shoot it if he wants. But police say he appeared to be drunk and has been charged with felony possession of a short-barreled shotgun, as well as other charges. In Watertown, Wisconsin, this is all that's left after a plane made a crash landing. The FAA says the small plane stalled, landed hard, slid into the hangar, and burst into flames. Two people on board were seriously hurt and taken to a local hospital. Witnesses say they heard two small explosions. Another hangar at the airport was also damaged. The cause of the crash is under investigation. And a minor league baseball player charged with assault after throwing a baseball during a brawl has been released from prison. This this is a video of Julio Castillo of the Peoria Chiefs being released from jail this afternoon in Dayton, Ohio. Castillo was being held on a $50,000 bond after Thursday's incident. It happened during an argument between managers. At one point, Castillo is seen throwing a ball at the opponent's dugout just yards away. However, he hit a fan sitting nearby. She ended up being okay. Castillo told police he intended to hit a player. His throw started a brawl, though, that lasted 10 minutes and delayed the game for an hour. Finally tonight, in an effort to teach inner-city kids some important lessons, the Ball Association of Baltimore sponsored its first Negro League Fan Fest in East Baltimore. People who attended young and old got a chance to see the history of African Americans in baseball before Jackie Robinson was the first major league player. The exhibit is the work of Ray Banks. He started his collection in 1996. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah nifty, nifty, and... Uh how about a quick check of the weather? Yeah. Second half Why, of the weekend, everybody wants looking? to know. You know, uh, I tell you what. Right now, we've got a couple of storms out there southwest of us by a long shot. Uh, tomorrow, though, better chance for a scattered storm in the afternoon. Watch out for that hot around 90. That's all for us at ABC2 News at 11. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow for ABC2 News at 6:30. Thanks for choosing ABC2 News at 11. Go online for more news now at abc2news.com. ABC2 works for you.